All right, so let's look at inverse trig functions. Uh, this is going to be several videos. These are the these are the examples that I'm going to work. Uh, you can see there's part one, part two, part three, and part four. There'll be I'll have four videos, uh, and each part will have its own video. I just decided to do it like that so the so I wouldn't have just one big long video. Now for this for inverse trig functions we've got to look at this arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent and so on. Okay. And the arc arc sine is you, you've got to understand that the range uh, is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or if you're in degrees negative 90 to 90 degrees and for cosine it's 0 to pi or 0 to 180 if you're in degrees for tangent negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or negative 90 to 90 degrees if you're in degrees and then for cotangent it's 0 to pi or 0 to 180 and for uh, arc secant that's 0 to pi over 2 or pi over 2 to pi or 0 to 90 or 90 to 180 okay and for arc cosecant that'd be negative pi over 2 to 0 or 0 to pi over 2 or negative 90 to 0 or 0 to 90 okay so so basically the the secant it's it's like the cosine see 0 to pi but the reason that it's split up like this is because uh, it's because we can't be at pi over 2 okay because the the cosines remember, remember secant is 1 over cosine and cosine of pi over 2 is 0 so that would have a uh, that would give us a zero in the denominator. That's why we're leaving out the pi over two. And the same thing here. This is why we're leaving out the zero for the arc, arcs cosecant. Okay. So you've just, you've got to know these right here. All right. And then you need to know this, all the special angles. Okay. So you can look at those and and you just need to memorize them. Okay. Try to try to learn them without you know d don't try to memorize the unit circle just know these and then and you'll do so much better you know with the with trig if you can just memorize these basic ones 30 45 and 60 degrees of sine cosine and tangent okay so let's go ahead and get started all right so here's part one uh, for inverse functions so I'm going to try to just keep this as simple as possible. Uh, we'll do everything. We'll write all our answers in degrees and, and we might put them in radians also. But look, let's look at the first two. Inverse sine. Okay? You know arc sine, inverse sine, they mean the same thing. Alright, so the arc sine of one half okay so what do I need to take the sine of to get one half well if you re if you remember those special angles at the first of the video well we know that would be 30 degrees so arc sine of one half is 30 degrees or if you wrote it in radians that would be pi over 6 okay so either one whether that whether it asks for degrees or radians okay now, inverse sine of negative square root of 3 over 2. Alright, so let's just keep this as simple as possible. We know that the inverse sine, we're going from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. Okay, and here's 0. Alright, so since we're doing the, the, the inverse sine of negative square root of 3 over 2, we know we're going to be over here in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so just I think the easiest way to look at it is okay. Let's just look at inverse sine of square root of three over two. 
Well, what is that? Well, from those special angles that you should remember, that's what? 60 degrees and it's negative. Okay? And it's just, it's that simple. Okay? Or if we put it in radians, that would be negative pi over 3. Alright? Now, let's look at the inverse cosine of 1 half. Well, you've got to memorize the special angles again. Okay? So the cosine of what is 1 half? Well, that's 60 degrees. Or if we put it in radians, that would be pi over 3. Okay? You've just got to, you've got to memorize these. Okay? You've got to memorize these special angles. All right. Now let's look at the arc cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Remember, cosine goes from 0 to pi. Okay, so if we're doing the arc cosine of a positive number, our angle is going to be in the first quadrant. Okay, if we're doing the arc cosine of a negative number, that's going to be in the second quadrant. We know cosine is negative in the second quadrant. Okay, so you can see here that this is negative, so you know we're over here. Okay, our angle measures over here in the second quadrant. And let me go ahead and just put the degree measure also. Okay, so you know pi over 2 is 90, pi is 180. Alright, so we'll think of it this way. What's the arc cosine of square root of 2 over 2? Well that's 45 degrees. So what we can do is we can use that 45 degrees as a reference angle. Okay, and so that would give us the angle here, theta. So we can see theta is what? 180 minus the 45 degrees. Okay? And that would give us theta is 135 degrees. And so this would be 135 degrees. Or if we put it in uh, radians, let's see, 135, that would be 135 pi over 180. And so that would give us 3 pi over 4 if we were in radian measure. Okay. All right. So now let's look at tangent. Okay. Or inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of 1, well, the tangent of what is 1? Well, that's 45 degrees. Okay. Or if we put it in radians, that would be pi over 4. All right, what about the inverse tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3? All right, so let's write that down or draw the, the xy axis. So we know tangent goes from what? Pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. But remember, the negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is not included because tangent's undefined it. 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. Well, tangent's negative. Well, we're either in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant here, and we know tangent's negative in the fourth, so we know we're down here. So, just the same way we did up here with inverse sine, the inverse tangent of positive square root of 3 over 3 is what? Well, that's 30 degrees, and it's we're in the fourth quadrant, it's negative. Okay, so the answer would be negative 30 degrees. Alright, so now if we want to write it in radians, that would be negative pi over 6. Alright, so that's going to be all for part 1. <clears throat> I hope that helped. Just try to keep it real simple. And we'll do, uh, we'll do part 2 next with the inverse cosecant, inverse secant, and inverse cotangent. And I would, I would suggest you watch all the videos, okay, because it's going to go through everything. All right, so thanks for watching. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and check out my other videos.